All right, so there's some problems in our homework that um, the help menus tell you to use a TI-83 calculator, but I don't, I don't want to have to use a TI-83 calculator. I'm going to show you how to do it with tables, and it makes a lot more sense. Okay, so here we're talking about um, the weights of steer, um, and they're talking about the variance and the mean. Um, so we're going to draw a normal curve and get started on this. The first thing we should probably address is that in this problem, I can't point with this, but I can point with my pointer, they actually give us the variance rather than the standard deviation. And um, I'm not sure why they chose to do this in this book, but a lot of statisticians talk about variance rather than standard deviation. So let's find the standard deviation so that we can draw a normal curve. The first we're going to talk about numbers a little bit. The square root of 4 we know is 2, and we know 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 100 is 1,000. So this is 200, but you're all going to stick it in your calculator anyway. Um, so the standard deviation for this problem is 200, and I think you'll probably run into this in later courses. Um, am I correct? Yeah. Um, in all criminology, students have to take CLIM 315. Um, it's research methods, and you'll have to find standard deviation and variance through data assignments. And do you use Excel or something else? Um, we do Excel, but you have to show your work like okay. before. Okay. All right. So this this will help you once you get there because you'll have a better understanding of kind of where you're going. All right. So first we need the standard deviation, which is 200. Um, the mean steer weight is 1,200 pounds. So I'm going to now draw our normal curve because we need our normal curve for everything. Um, and it doesn't matter how nice your normal curve looks. Mine never look perfect. But the mean weight here is the 1200 I kind of like to turn them sideways sometimes the 1200 pounds and then since the standard deviation is 200 pounds we can go up and down 200 pounds and just get some like kind of ballpark ideas so 1200 plus 200 or plus one standard deviation this is the mean and the z-score is zero this is the mean plus 200 which is 1400 I'm writing sideways kind of okay um, this is the mean plus one standard deviation. So the z-score here is one. And this is the mean minus one standard deviation. So 1,200 minus 200 is 1,000. And that is the mean minus one standard deviation. And the z-score here is negative one. So we know that the average steer right in here average steer um, weigh between a thousand and fourteen hundred pounds and that's what percentage does either one of you have the like number in your head of the percentage between minus one and plus one standard deviations is it in your head no it's fallen out because we weren't doing the homework recently okay so this is from the empirical rule 68 percent of those steer way or or more than half like a, most of them the average steer is in that range but that's not what they're asking for i just wanted to kind of get us started on this okay so the mean steer weight is 200 pounds find the probability that a weight of a randomly selected steer is between 1300 and 1440 so 1300 is right around here somewhere and 1440 is there so let's draw those lines for this problem 1300 is right in between here I'm coming down pretty far. And 1440 is just over this. So this is 13. I'm going to do lower, upper. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. 13. Oh, I'm off the screen. Okay, hold on. <laughs> 13. It was 13 what? 1300 and 1440. And 1440. So neither one of those is exactly on a z-score so what we're going to do is we're going to find the z-scores for these so now let's find the z-scores of these two numbers um, if you remember the z-score is the number of standard deviations above the mean you are so 1300 some of you can probably see that 1300 is halfway between 1200 and 1400 so it's halfway between z0 and z1 which means it's 0.5 but we're just going to go ahead and use the formula the z-score is where you are minus the mean over the standard deviation. So the z-score for 1300 is 1300 
minus the mean 1200 over the standard deviation, which is up here, I think you can still see that on the screen, yeah, over 200, which is equal to 1300 minus 1200 is 100 over 200, which is equal to a half or 0.5, because almost everything here uses decimals. So that's our first z-score, um, and I'm going to go ahead and write it under here. I think you can still see that, yeah, z equals 0.5. So this is 0.5 above the mean, half of a standard deviation above the mean. And then we're going to do our second z-score, our z-score of 1440, which is um, our x, which is our place, our whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to cross my z's because mathematicians cross their z's, so you can tell it's not twos. Maybe we all have messy handwriting. Um, but it's 1440 minus 1200 over 200. So 1440 minus, okay, so we get our 240 divided by 200, which is going to give us a 1.2, because 200 over 200 is 1, and 40 two hundredths is a 0.2, because that would be 20 out of 100. Not that you need to think all those things, you can just stick it in your calculator. Okay, so we have our two z-scores. We have the z-score of 0.5 for this one and a z-score of 1.2 for this one. Now with the z-scores, we're going to go to the table that's in your book. Let me get pull that up. Now let me show you where to pull it up. This is going to be a little bit convoluted. So when you're in the book, and I might need to go ahead and open a whole new Hawks for this, um, but I can't open Hawks in two places. Um, I showed you on a screen grab somewhere else, I believe, but there are stat tables. They're also on the discussion board to pull up. I'm going to just pull up the one from our discussion board really quick. I'll show you where it is on the discussion board. Here's our discussion board. This is the discussion board for Unit 5B. There's stat tables for people without a fancy calculator. I'm going to pull the stat table up. Um, they're also on Hawks, but I feel like it's nicer to have them here. So the stat tables tell you the area to the left of the curve. So I'm going to draw some stuff back on the document camera again and show you kind of what we're thinking to do this problem. So what I want to do is redraw our normal curves. We were trying to find the um, amount of steer between our between these two places here, between 1400 and 1300. And in order to use the table, the table gives us the area to the left of any line. So I'm going to draw two different things here. I'm going to draw our 1440 because that's something we can get from the table. And the z-score for 1440 was 1 1.2. And then underneath it, and I'll explain why in just a minute, underneath it, I'm going to draw, you know, another beautiful bell curve that hopefully kind of looks close to the same, which it doesn't. I'm going to draw where the 1300 is. And I'm going to shade both of those a little bit relatively quickly. Um, let's see if I can do this. Zoom, shaded U and shaded U. Okay, so the table will give us the area behind that value. How many steer way from nothing, which there's none, all the way up to 1440 and how many steer away from nothing all the way up to 1300. So let's look at the table at those two z scores and kind of remember a couple things, some like places that we should know. The number of steer who weigh less than 1200 or the amount is 50% or 0.5 because that's the mean, the median, and the mode. So 50% way below here. It's the middle, the weight of the middle steer, if you line them all up, is 1,200. Um, and so half of the steer are lighter than that, and half of them are heavier. So we know that this is 50%. So this value here has to be more than 50%. And this value here has to be more and more than 50%, because we've already got the 50% plus this 34% here 
that's half of the 68. So this one has to be greater than 50% plus 34%, 50 plus 34, has to be greater than 84%. We know that. And this one's going to be less than 84%. It's going to be more than 50, but less than 84. So that's kind of like some ballparky things to think of where we're going. So let's take these two values, the 1.2 and the 1300 was a 0.5. And we'll look those up on the table. Let's go to the table. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's our table. And we start down here at these negative values. Really um, bigger negative z-scores that would be teeny weeny weeny steer. Um, and we're looking over here. So we're going to scroll down on this table to get to the place where it seems like it's going to be more relevant. Okay, so when we scroll down to the second page of the tables that I provided for you, or the second page that you can find on Hawks, we get into um, the bigger steer, <laughs> or the bigger whatever it is. So we needed a z-score of 1.2 and of 0.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so I can write on this. Okay, so we're on the table, and we had talked earlier about how a z-score of 0 gives you... Um, 0.5 or 50% of the data from right there. But now we need to get a z-score of 0.5. Um, so here's our 0.5 right here. Boom. Z-score of 0.5 and a z-score of 1.2. Um, so these are easier than some of the other ones you've had to do on here because the 0 0.50 is just going to be this value right here and 1.2 is going to be this value right here. And I'm going to write those down on the other piece of paper, and then we're going to move on. So reading the table, if it was 0.57, um, which it's not right now, but on other problems it might be, you'd have to um, take the 0.5, my pointer's not really working, um, and go over to the 0 0.07. So if it was 0.57, we would go along this white thing and go to here. But that's not what we need this time. This time we're only using these two values, the 1.2, which was pretty easy to find, or the 0.5, which was pretty easy to find, and the 1.2. So this is 1.20 and 1 point, or 0.50. So we have the two values. Let's take them over to our paper. Transferred those two um, values over to our drawings, our very <laughs> rough drawings. And again, I want to get out what we're looking for is this area right in here between the 1400 pounds and the 1300 pounds. So what we need to do is we're going to take the area, the orange area, the 0.8849, and we're going to remove this green area from it. So we're just going to subtract. Let's go ahead and do that. And when we do the orange minus the green, we get 0.19 three, four, either on your calculator or by hand. And what that ends up telling us is, let me see if I can draw one more curve without making a total mess here. Um, um, yeah, I need to zoom out a little bit more. Let's see if I can zoom out without, yeah. Okay, so what that ends up telling us is that the area between here and here that we were looking for, this is what we were looking for, is that 0.1934. So I like percentages better, so that would be 19.34%, but let's see how the program wanted us to enter it. So it's the 0.1934, which is all the steer below 1400 minus all the steer below 1300, which gives you the steer between 1400 and 1300. Let's see how the program wants it. All right, so they were asking us to find the probability, and I kept talking about area under the curve, which is why they're using decimals, because probability has to be a number between 0 and 1, and that's a pretty slim thing, so the 0.1934 is what we really should type in right here, 0.19, whoops, 9.34, and then we submit our answer, boop, boop. And it says yay. Hopefully that helps you guys see how to use the tables. Um, I don't really like the TI-83s. I really like using the tables. And um, let me know if you need more videos like this.